Okay, we're back. Well, um, just like in the last session, I'm going to continue talking about some kind of storage or saving our stuff, okay? Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is mass storage, which is probably something that you should not probably personally right now be concerned about because we're talking about storage of huge amounts of information, okay? Not your homework, definitely not your homework, okay? So let's get to this. Well, when we think of mass storage, we think of huge amounts of storage requirements, okay? So there is many things that you can do, you know, as you can see in the illustration, we can think of clouds and we can think of arrays of disks, okay? And we think about how we're gonna be working uh, them out, you know, from the perspective of an enterprise. So indeed, what we're thinking about and what we're talking about in here is data from a company, you know, something huge. Let's say a bank, okay? When you're thinking about a bank, you know, a bank cannot be down not even for a second because people are constantly, you know, swapping credit cards, making purchases, acquiring loans, paying loans back, you know, there is many things that they are doing. So all of that information for every single transaction, for every single customer, every single day, actually every second of every day has to be stored. And it has to be stored for a while. So the amount of storage needed grows and grows and grows as the company grows right, and as more cu customers become part of it. So I want you to have that perspective of how big the need for mass storage is, not for you again, but for different companies. Let's continue. So which devices can help me out for this? Well, first of all, we're gonna talk about file servers, okay? And what is this? Well, as we have heard about the word server, you know, it's a computer that it's dedicated to something, right? In this case, you can think that it's dedicated, you know, to take care of files, okay? Now, this is a big computer, okay, that has a lot of storage. Why? Because it's storing files and it's serving the files. It's, it's kind of managing the files, if you will, okay? So because it is within the company, right, most of the time, then it will be accessed fast, you know, it can access the, the data faster for everybody that is in the company. Now, aside from file servers, we have something called a network attached storage, and this one is a little less expensive. So let's go a little bit and talk about what each one of these is. We begin with the file servers, okay? So it's a dedicated computer, which is basically just a regular computer, well, a regular server, not the regular computer, which inside of it, it has the, um, a very, very huge uh, capacity, storage capacity, okay? So basically, if it's a server, a server has to decide if somebody has access to that information that it's keeping or not. So but then the server stays there and it's like, Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, you go in, you don't, I give you this information, I don't give you that information, and so on. Okay, <clears throat> so it is, it is guarding, right? So that file server is taking care of that. And it's fast because it's within the premises, okay? But it's a dedicated computer for that matter. Then you have the network attached storage, okay? Now that one is basically just like an external hard drive. Okay, it's less expensive, but it's also less secure. Because why? Because anybody has sort of an access to that network attached storage and there is no way to really secure it that well, as well as a file server will do. Okay, so that's why probably it's cheap. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so another one that we were gonna see here is RAID, okay? This one, RAID, stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. So as you can see here, the A1, 2, 3, and 4, let's think of them as independent disks, like, you know, hard disks, if you will. You, you can visualize them as hard drives or solid state drives, but they are independent from each other, yet they work as a team. Now, in order for them to work as a team and look as, a, as if they were one, we use a technique called virtualization. And what it does is that it makes 
that set of, of independent disks look like just one. So when you are storing information in there, you don't say, oh, I want to store it in A1 or A2, right? You just say, I want to store it into the array of disks, and it will store it, you know, depending on what kind of RAID you're running. But it will be stored, and it will be retrieved. And for you, it's just one drive. And uh, even though, logically, you know, the hardware is, is more than one drive. Now, this is actually quite secure, you know, because it automatically backs up. So, as I said, right, so we have several disks and you see them as one. So, if you're using RAID, you're not going to think, oh, is there several disks or how many disks do I have? You don't know. It's just the same thing as when you go and you look for something in Google. You think that, oh, you're asking Google.com, but in reality, they have big farms of servers and you don't know exactly which one is taking care of your query right? It's the same thing in here. You just believe that there is one drive, but there is, there is many. Now, there is another thing. RAID, there is several versions of RAID, okay? Some of them, it, it depends on the kind of, of technology, RAID technology that you are using. And I believe that sometime here during this class, you're going to probably learn a little bit more about this, but if you really want to get in-depth into RAID technology, then I recommend that you take ICS 184 when we talk about net networking. And we, we have, I think, a full class on RAID, you know, and you can see different kinds of protocols for, for the RAID principle. Okay, let's continue. So aside from this, then, we have cloud storage, which has become very famous, right? Everything is in the cloud, for good or bad, right? But everything's in the cloud. So usually, cloud storage is owned by a company. Somebody owns that. For example, I'm just going to give you a little example here. This is no, not by any means mass storage devices, but you can think of Dropbox, okay? It's owned by Dropbox, and you put your stuff up there. Okay, now data is stored in logical pools. So we go back into not exactly knowing how is the hardware architecture behind it, but we know that our data is somewhere in there and we actually know how to get to it, okay? So our data can be accessed in many different ways, okay? So the cloud got that name because first of all, it's accessible, everybody can see the cloud up there, right? Now the cloud we don't is, is fuzzy. We don't really know exactly where things are, okay? So I know that some of my information is actually in the cloud, but where exactly it is, I don't know. But I know the logical way of getting to it. You know, I know that I enter my username, my password, and then I have, it looks just like, you know, the stuff that I see in my computer, just like a, a folder and I click and I get it down, you know? So it is, it is very transparent. It's a technology that makes it look so easy, but in reality, you know, we have a lot of hardware and a configuration that many times we don't know about or how it works, but that it works for us. And many times we don't really care how it works, unless, of course, you work for one of those companies that are hosting, right? Let's continue. So, uh, how about your data as an organization, as a business, you know, right there in the cloud? Well, you may have uh, private cloud services, which means, you know, a, another company that just specializes in providing uh, storage for you will provide it and will give you cloud service, right? But it's only for your organization. And it will probably provide with a high-speed connection. What happens with this is that um, it will, it's um, the uh, organizational cloud is going to be dedicated to your, to your business, well, or to several businesses that they serve. It's not a public cloud where everybody can put anything they want and it just stays there and anybody can have access to it. Actually, if they are a private company that are providing cloud services for your company, they're probably more mindful about their security and everything and they try to, to keep everything safe and secure, you know, and, and they are more aware of all those things because they are trying to protect your data. And maybe one of the things that they do is that really they go out and say, hey, we're going to keep you safe, you know. Please, you know, store your data with us. Because all these, uh, all these companies, 
that provide this kind of storage are companies that actually know how important data is and they really do their best, hopefully, you know, to keep it safe. Let's continue. So we have then also storage area networks, which by the way, you could learn more in 184 as well. So these are networks that provide access to computer storage devices, okay? Computer storage devices, not just to the storage, but the storage, you know, the storage devices that are gonna store the information that you need, okay? So uh, there is a certain computer or a server that is gonna provide a local and it's quoted because for the user it's gonna seem like it's, a, it's local, it's right there, but no, it's actually getting out of there, okay? So it's gonna provide the access, the system access, and the computer provides the file system and the, and the storage area network provides the disk space, okay? So basically, remember when we talk about a file server, the computer is there and within the computer, there is the, um, the, the file, you know, it's, it's the storage right in there. Now, when we talk about this, the area network, there is a server, it's like a gateway keeper. And it's like, hey, you go in or you don't go in. But it doesn't contain the place where the files are gonna be saved. It's gonna say, hey, you can go in and pass on, you know, the storage is over there. And you pass, the storage is over there. And it, it's like a gatekeeper, but it doesn't keep the storage. It's just guarding to see who's gonna keep the storage or not. That is the difference, okay? So what do we expect here? Let's continue. Well, there is one thing. Data storage is just gonna be more and more. We're gonna need it more and more, okay? And what we're trying to do is to increase capacity without increasing size. Yep, we're trying to do that for a while. We wanna make sure that we can store even more in less. Have you noticed how storage has reduced, reduced little by little, you know, from a drive to a thumb drive? Maybe later on, it's gonna be even smaller. How much, how many bits can we pack together? Let's see what the future awaits. See you around.